Comedian Constantine Kissin has pulled out of a charity gig this week after a university presented him with a behavioural contract. Yes, a behavioural contract. This contract banned topics including racism, sexism, classism, ageism, ableism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, xenophobia, Islamophobia or anti-religion or anti-atheism. OK, there's a lot of things to tell jokes about. The key is, though, is that while some perhaps are easier to work out, others may be seen as sexist when, in fact, it's not the gender that you're being sexist about. It is poking fun at the person who is telling the joke and their attitude towards someone of a different gender. You can say it's racist, but in fact... The mickey taking is not taking place at the expense of a minority, but at the expense of a majority. This bigotry needs to be poked fun at. So is it all down to the ear of the beholder? What do you think of a university handing a comedian a behavioural contract? Do you think ultimately that that is a good thing? You should not be able to derive entertainment from the isms and phobias that I mentioned before. If you have to resort to that kind of quote-unquote comedy, you know, you remember those people in the 1970s and 80s who thought certain things were funny, then you're a dinosaur. It's not funny anymore. It may have been funnier then, but we've moved on. Or do you think that this is just pernicious? Do you think that something about this just makes you feel uncomfortable? However liberal you may be, and that's not a political statement, that's just, well, why would you want to be illiberal, quite frankly? Something about this just makes you feel uncomfortable, telling comedians, creatives, what they can and can't say. After all, if you're a comedian that wants to tell those kind of jokes, the audience will make their own mind up, won't they? Is this just patronising the audience? Or do you think that we need to take a stand? As we did. That ensured that certain comedians that unfortunately I had to grow up seeing on TV, my kids won't have to see on TV. They won't have to experience certain types of comedy. Now, I haven't seen things like Ain't Our Fault Mom or Mind Your Language or Love Thy Neighbour. I haven't seen any of those things for decades. And I wonder now what it would seem like to watch things like that, that were regarded to be, if you're old enough to remember some of those programmes, would they make you cringe now? Or would you think that they were as funny as they were then? Out of place, out of time. Or do you feel that, well... The audience should decide, not the university, on what is and what isn't funny and what is and what isn't acceptable. 08085 909 693. If you're at uni, get in contact with me. I'd like to know whether you feel that a university should act on your behalf in this way or whether you yourself should be able to make that decision. Text 85058. You don't have to be at university to have an opinion on this. You can also reach out to me on Twitter at BBC5Live or you can tweet me directly if you wish. Or you can email afternoonedition at bbc.co.uk. Constantine Kissin is the comedian at the heart of this story. We also have Kate Smirthwaite, who's a comedian and activist, and the Birmingham deputy editor of student paper, The Tab, is Annabelle Penhalligan. Hello, everybody. Hello. Um, Hello, thanks for having us. It's uh, great to have you all on. Um, Constantine, I'll start with you then. Okay, so you... Would you say any of your comedy comes under the banner of racist, sexist, classist, ageist, ableist, homophobic, biphobic, transphobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, anti-religious or anti-atheist? Uh, well, let's just get something clear out of the way. In addition to that part of it, there's another part of the letter that stipulates that all 
topics must be tackled in a way that is respectful and kind. And that's another part of the letter that seems to have been missed. Respectful um, and kind? Yes. So comedy has to be delivered in a way that is respectful and kind on all topics. That was another part of the letter. Is that tonally? Oh, well, I, I wouldn't know. I imagine right. I imagine that that was just a stipulation that all topics must be covered from the perspective of being kind to everybody. And it's obviously ridiculous because even self-deprecating comedy has an element of cruelty. You're being cruel to yourself. Well, I've seen comedians be pretty cruel to any hecklers in the front two or three rows. Not even hecklers, in fact, in the two or three rows. Right. Yeah. Well, and that is part of the comedy club environment. Personally, I'm well, not someone not cruel, who really but... picks on the, yeah. on the audience unless I am being heckled, in which case you do have to, uh, you know, you do have to take control of the gig. But let's just come back to your original question. The one uh, misperception that's come out of all this is I'm some kind of edgelord comedian that goes around intentionally offending people. Uh, and and the, uh, this is the reason that I was sent. That's not letter. a comedian. I think that's just a sociopath, isn't well, it? Well, yeah, but that, that, is, that is the perception that people have taken because right. of what's happened. So let's just clear this up. I was performing at one of London's best comedy club, Top Secret Comedy Club. One of the, the students saw me perform there, saw a number of us performing, a number of comedians performing, asked for our permission to contact us in order to ask us to donate our time to raise money for UNICEF, to which we all agreed. And at that point, some weeks later, they emailed us with this letter. So uh, they already saw my act and clearly liked it because they liked it enough to invite me. And I would say to you that I am well within the mainstream of comedy. I'm not someone who goes out to offend people. In almost every comedian's set, there's going to be something that can be misinterpreted. Uh, but I am absolutely not the kind of comedian that goes out to offend people. Now, to answer your question directly, is there anything in my material that I consider to be a violation of any of the rules? I have done material about religion in the past. I'm it's something I'm quite critical of. I'm, I'm not sure if I've poked fun at atheists. Uh, but if you broaden out the question, just say take something like uh, ageism, for example. Yeah, it, it's been the staple of comedy for the last two years uh, to talk about how uh, all leave voters uh, are, are stupid old people and how we can't wait for them to die and how they shouldn't be allowed the right to vote. Now, look, That's I'm, comedy? Yeah, apparently. Well, go and watch Live at the Apollo. There have been several comedians who've done I'm that sure on that's TV. That's just insulting. On Live at the Apollo. Now, I'm someone who voted Remain. Uh, and I don't agree with that kind of joke, but I absolutely believe that comedians should ha should have the right and the ability to say it. And, you know, I'm sure Kate will pitch in in a minute. Kate is someone that I disagree with about everything, but I absolutely... Probably not everything. No, absolutely everything. Probably really? even the colour of the sky we'd struggle to agree on. Uh, but I admire her, Kate I respect probably her. probably hates Nazis. Do you, do you love Nazis? No, I don't. But, right, so there you go, you've agreed on but, something. But her definition of Nazi is likely to be very different. I suspect it might include me. Anyway, my point is, uh, I respect Kate, uh, I, uh, I admire her, and even though we disagree, I would fight for her right to say whatever the hell she wants on stage. Uh, so I think, really, that's what we're talking Talking about it's the ability of comedians to to perform and to play with things. Uh, of course, no one's advocating that comedians should go on stage and just be racist, straight up racist and homophobic and call for violence against people. Of course, no one's suggesting that. Kate, what a opportune moment to bring you in. <laughs> um, would you um, defend with every part of your being Constantine's right to say what he wants in his comedy? No, I don't think that I don't think that what I want to defend is like the right of comedians to say absolutely anything they want. You know, and it, it always feels like we get pushed into this corner of like, what about free speech? What about free speech? And suddenly we go, free speech, that's the one thing that matters. And then, you know, and then you've got eight larger children shouting something racist at a smaller child and we go, when are we going to end bullying? Uh, you know, the fact is that free speech is a principle principle that we should all, you know, aspire to. There has to be limitations on what is said in certain... I mean, I'm here on air. There are things I could not say on air on the BBC, quite rightly so, because over the years, you know, the BBC has evolved a policy of what's OK to say and what's not to say. And you're absolutely right, I think, to have that and to enforce it. And I think 
you know, the only thing it should be is always up for debate and discussion. So if people feel strongly that there's something else that should be added to the list of don't say this, um, oh, then that's fair enough. Oh, we need to expand the list, do we, Kay? Well, and there are other things that are on the list that I think probably shouldn't be. And if I look at the letter that Constantine had, I think some of it makes a lot of sense. I, I, I actually well, so agree I. with Constantine that, that the prohibition on criticising religion, to me that seems like the wrong line to draw because to criticise someone's race or someone's gender, of course, those are things you don't have control over. So those are things that you should be free from criticism over. But, you know, your religion, you do have control over what you choose to believe um, in the same way that if somebody said they voted for a particular political party, I would feel like I had a right to challenge that and say, well, I think that's a, a very foolish opinion and I think that you're wrong and here's why. So I think that there are things on that piece of paper that, that make sense. And, and to be honest, as a, as a comedian, I perform all around the UK week in and week out. I'm absolutely tired of having to go on stage and follow comedians who are doing material that is grotesquely sexist, that trivialises is violence against women and to be in an environment where you hear a room full of people laughing along with a nasty joke that references for example sexual violence and then I'm the next person on stage I think oh this is a tough life sometimes I wish that I didn't have to live in that world and I feel bad for audience members who might have experienced sexual violence or have friends who've had the same experience who want to come out and relax and have fun and just as they're kind of enjoying their second second drink and getting into that chill out it's you know it's Friday night mode suddenly they're kind of hit in the face with something that they you know, that they're perhaps not ready for. And I have a great deal of time and respect for those clubs that, you know, for example, um, the Poodle Club in Sydenham, for example, Quantum Leopard, uh, some of my favourite clubs around the country that make a very careful point of saying, we want you to be able to relax and enjoy the night. And for that reason, here's what we don't want at our club. And I feel like the SOAS letter goes a little bit too far. It goes further than I would, would go if I was writing that letter. But I feel like the principle is fair enough. And I also feel like it's their event. And if you want to have an event to support support people with epilepsy, there'll be no flashing lights. And if you want to have an event and draw your own rules, do you know what I mean? If you want to have a, a, a guest on air to talk about the price of cheese and you say, could we please not stray into talking about other subjects? I think you're fair enough to say, this is what I want to talk about and this is what I want. And if performers don't want to do it, um, they have the freedom to say, no, thanks, I'll go do something else. When uh, Constantine does his uh, one man show, obviously the audience can choose whether his kind of comedy is what they want to see. But I feel like so us when they're curating an event, they should have the freedom to draw those lines. And they're not the lines that I would draw, but those are their lines, and I think it's their event, and they should be at liberty to do so. Um, Kate, have you ever gone on after a comedian who's made a joke that you regard to be offensive and the audience have also felt the same way? Yeah, I've had both experiences. I've so definitely isn't that, had that what experience. it's about then? Isn't, is it not about the a mature adult audience's ability to be able to make a decision about what they feel is appropriate or not. No, I don't think so at all. I don't think that we should just say, well, let's just say anything. And then the audience, because first of all, an audience has a right to go out and know what kind of night they're going to. If you go to a barbecue, you don't expect sushi. And if you go to a night that says we're a really friendly, lovely, happy comedy club, you know, like I, like I mentioned, the Poodle Club or Quantum Leopard, you know what you're expecting and you have a right to get that. And you know, the idea of just... Because I have absolutely been in audiences where a comedian has said something that I find obnoxious. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example of... of, of uh, I've heard comedians say, uh, I, was, I was having sex with my girlfriend and then she woke up. Now, to me, that's, a, that's a, an icky, gross joke. I don't want to follow a comedian that said that. But I've seen comedians say that and a whole audience of people roar with laughter. Now, many of those people probably wouldn't laugh at that joke if they heard it at, you know, half past nine on a Monday morning. They'd go, what are you talking about? But it's Friday night, they're kind of drunk, they're out with friends, everyone else is laughing. They don't want to be the one that stands up in the middle of the room and goes, seriously, I don't like that, that's not OK. Comedy is a communal shared experience and we laugh along with things. I've also but seen But not everything members. finds... I mean, you'll look at your audience and some people will laugh at your jokes and some people won't. It's a shared experience, but not everybody finds it funny. No, 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 they funny. all laugh I've, at me, Nihal. They of all, course they do. Everybody. Of course, I'm of the course, only comedian yeah, in, 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 in Christendom in with a 100% but, approval but, rating. But, I, I assume yeah. that's why you had me on. But it, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's interesting because I, I, I've just looked up the Poodle Club's uh, website and it says London's Happiest Little Comedy Club. Now, yep. from that, I can't tell 
what kind of comedy is going to be on that. I mean, that's as about as as bland and as open as uh, you would expect it to, to not yeah, be London's right saddest now. little comedy club. Well, you're club, absolutely you? right. As a matter of fact, the, the other club I mentioned, Quantum Leopard, has a very, very explicit um, agenda on what they want and they very much send a, a similar kind of letter um, to comedians saying this is what is, is and isn't OK on our stage, regardless of what you might do elsewhere. The Poodle is much more, um, I know about its reputation from word of mouth, from people who go there and we all know that if you go to the Poodle Club and, you know, say things which are obnoxious and which are going to deliberately uh, lay into people on, on the grounds of uh, things like race, gender, um, sexuality, etc., then you're just not going to be booked there. It's much more of a kind of implicit... They're not, they're not out there telling you what to say, but they will book the acts that do the, that do the kind of comedy that they like. And, I mean, in the same way that if I book an event for my birthday, well, you know, like, no offence, but Constantine won't be on the bill because... It's it's my taste and it's my choice of acts, not because I'm trying to yeah. silence There's him, but because I'm, I'm curating it. To decline. Uh, okay, okay. But we're actually, there is a point of agreement between Kate and I. Very quickly, Constantine, no go way. on. Because yeah, be, I want to bring quickly. Annabelle back on. And don't worry, I, we will I, I'll be honest with you. I'm, I haven't been doing comedy as long as Kate, so I've never heard anyone tell the kind of jokes that she's talks about. But if I heard that kind of joke, I wouldn't be happy going on after that either. And I probably, if I went on after an act who did the joke like that, address it myself and ridicule the comedian and mock them for, for saying it. Uh, but the issue here is something else because these people saw me perform, they liked my set and then they invited me and then tried to tell me what to say and not to say. So this is, I think, the issue is that it's about people trying to control what comedians do on stage. And I think that should concern all of us. And one very quick point. I don't think this story has anything to do with comedy. The reason the story has gone viral is nothing to do with the students. It's nothing to do with me. What it is about is the fact that people in society, just ordinary people, feel like they're walking around on eggshells every day. They feel like they don't know what they might say that might offend somebody. We keep being told that asking someone where they're from is offensive. Uh, we, we, you know, People just go to their job every day and they don't quite know how to communicate with their colleagues anymore. And I think that's why this story has gone viral, because people People feel like political correctness, which is a good idea in principle, the idea that we shouldn't just be nasty to people for the sake of it, has been taken way beyond its remit and is now being stretched to a point where even Kate says, you know, some of the things in that letter she doesn't agree with. OK, even Kate. Uh, let's speak to Annabelle Penhalligan now, who is uh, the deputy editor of student paper The Tab in Birmingham. Annabelle, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, you've listened to Constantine and Kate now put uh, their sides across. Uh, what do you think of this? this letter that Soas put out, this contract. I totally agree with it because I think that if your comedy relies on invading someone's safe space and offending someone, it can't be that funny. If you have to make someone that uncomfortable and be that, I suppose, using the word edgy, then you can't have that much original content, you can't be that amusing in your comedy. OK. Um, so the fact that they saw me and invited me to perform, how does that square with what you've just said? If they saw me and found me funny and then sent me that letter. How does that square? But, but you understand the letter is a generic one. It's not personally sent just to you, Constantine. It was sent personally to me and four other comedians, that, all, exactly. all of whom, it's all of whom, safe. It's all of whom had been space. seen on the same night yes, at the same but, comedy but club. But every, comedi every comedian was expected to abide by the rules of the institution that was booking them. It, you know, So regardless of whether they liked your material or not, they just wanted to make sure that you understood the rules because of course comedians have many different sets don't they Constantine uh, so so they booked a comedian that they liked but expected him to be racist and homophobic not so they expected sent him, him. it wasn't accused him. of letter I don't it was expect sure. you to be a dangerous driver but I still expect you to wear a belt the, I, I don't really understand that argument uh, the, the, the issue here is that if you book a comedian, the argument is, having seen them perform, in other words, you if you've seen a driver drive event. around, well, let's take your analogy. You've seen a driver drown, drive around for two years wearing a seatbelt, and then you send them a letter two years later going, you must wear a seatbelt. I think a lot of people will find no, that No, they quite... saw you drive once. Yeah. Well, that's it's... all. That's all they did. And <laughs> then they just wanted to make sure that if you were going to come and drive in the vicinity of them, that please the seatbelt as well while driving. I don't want to stretch this over because it will get boring. I think, I think but you're I totally think right, Nihal, like in the sense that, you know, they've come and they've seen Constantine once, but comedians don't perform the same material every single night. And I do. Especially in the... Well, well yeah, maybe, so maybe it's time to That's a limited career choice. That was a joke. Hello. <laughs> like, I mean, you know, I write a new show every year and people who've seen one show are absolutely entitled to go, oh, you know, what's your new show about? You know, P.S. Here are our house rules. I am... Um, 
I, I never have a problem with that, not least because my material doesn't do those things. But if they wanted me to, to say I'm never going crit to criticise organised religion, then I would absolutely be like, OK, um, you know, I'm going to look at the event and either I'm going to say, OK, this is, there's a reason why you've asked for that, it's reasonable, I've got other material that I'm happy to do in this circumstance, or I'm going to say, you know what, that's really core to what I want to talk about right now and so I'm going to choose not to do the event because it's something that I think, you know, that, um, that I think shouldn't be protected and I think we should challenge. OK, a Annabelle... Um, the problem is, is it in the ear of the beholder, isn't it? So if you're making a joke about um, you, the way your uh, your granddad acts, for instance, um, that's ageism, isn't it? So that means what you can't say anything about family members. Uh, you have become middle class. Uh, you come from a working class background. Uh, your parents are still of that particular uh, uh, mindset, shall we say, which is generalising. Um, you can't talk about them. I mean, where does this end, Annabelle? It's about knowing when a joke becomes a thinly veiled microaggression. I think you can tell when something becomes more than just um, a throwaway comment, when it's offensive to someone, when it is just too far. Do you yeah, understand totally why agree. some people would uh, uh, <laughs> think the phrase thinly veiled microaggression is like straight from a like a GCSE paper? And, and what does that <laughs> even mean? Hang on. What does that I, even mean? I think mean? it's extremely rude. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let Annabelle, Anna, well, it's extremely rude yeah, to one. feel that you can defend Annabelle. Annabelle is quite capable to defend herself, Kate. I'm, sh Annabelle. I'm sure she is, but Annabelle, I just think it's well, really nasty of Constantine well, to just start do, laughing when she's talking about people Oh, God, I laughed at something. That's offensive. Annabelle, Annabelle, I think it's Anna, very rude. Annabelle can yeah, defend herself. Why not listen? Annabelle, go. I did listen and then I laughed at what she said. Annabelle, go ahead. Um, what I'm trying to say is the fact that you can tell when something has gone too far, when something has made someone uncomfortable. I mean, we, we've all been in situations where someone has said something which is offensive in a way and you've sort of laughed away at it because it is too awkward to comment on it. And it's about securing this, the understanding that if you're offended by something and you've got, reason, you've got a reason to be offended by it and you shouldn't, you shouldn't be laughed at for that reason. Mm. Yeah. So if I'm offended by what you've just said, uh, then I have a right to ask you not to say it. What were you right? offended, How are you offended what part by? Of it? It? Yeah, what part? Well, I, I'm offended by you restricting comedians' right to say what they want on stage. It's I'm not restricting them. It's making sure that it's not being too offensive. The comedy no, but is I'm still offended. comedic. Look, I'm offended. I have the right to be offended according to the rules of that course you just you laid do. out. But so what? I'm offended. Can you please stop behaving in this offensive way? <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop laughing at me. I find that offensive too, just as Kate has just elaborated. Well, I just think it's rude. I didn't say I found it offensive. I think it's rude when somebody's talking about, you know... Microaggressions. Yeah, do you... I mean, do you even understand what, what is meant by that? I feel like you're just... I mean, you're just sort of being a bit of an alt-right... You know, oh, all right. Whatever. Well, that, that we got there in the end. You did, you did, you well, did that, call that, me I, I, very I, good. I, 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 sorry, to be honest with you, Constantine, having seen your work, I assume that you describe yourself that way. If not, you probably ought to put it <laughs> on your business cards. That is hilarious. Have you actually oh, seen my... me perform, Kate? Yes. I don't think you have. Oh, you yes, have. have. Yes. Okay, right, let's that's just, just. I mean, I only just watched the first half, obviously, British because okay. I okay. Okay. Uh, go, 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 Guys, you can find a pub car park to have this argument, but here on the radio, I'd like to know, Constantine, what do you understand by the term thinly veiled microaggression? A thin, so a microaggression is something that is not an aggressive uh, act, but it is, uh, so I gave an example of it earlier, something like asking someone where they're from. I'm from Russia, right? And sometimes people will ask me where I'm from. And now students like Annabelle consider this offensive because... You Can know, you understand, though, why? Say, no, say, I don't no, understand minute, why. There is no, no, nothing wait, wait, here, offensive. Here, here you go. Let me, just let me finish the sentence well, and then you can have the explanation. Let me finish the answer to your first question and, and then and, you can ask me another and, question. And then do you understand why? Well, you answer that. Do you understand why that, say, for instance, for someone of colour, when someone asks them... Where are you from? And you go, oh, I'm from I'm from Essex. And they go, no, 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 where are you really from? Can you understand why perhaps... I didn't say anything about someone I... say where they're really from. Oh, I oh, said, oh, oh, where oh, are they oh, from? But so for people... Some... Oh, OK, but for, pe for someone who is of colour, for instance, and because I, you know, I do a show on the Asian Network and I hear this a lot from the listeners there, that when they are asked, where are you from? And then they say, and then they go, no, 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 where are you from? They are offended by that because they believe that implicit in that second question is that you do not belong here. Now, well, do you've you just introduced you a completely what? different example. But That's not what I was what? talking oh, about. Oh, OK, then. Okay. So no, what I, I was talking I, I about... No, Neil, can I, can I please finish my point. point? I still haven't had a chance to do that. So I was talking about the example of someone being told, asked, where are you from, being considered a microaggression by students. And my point is, I am someone who's from abroad, and I don't find that offensive at all. I find that people because are being Because you are from abroad. Right. Yeah. And uh, Well, I gave you an example whereby someone would be offended but by I've the idea. But I've lived in this country for 25 years. Because they are born here. Can't be offended by it. But, but also, 
I just don't feel like you saying you're not offended by it doesn't doesn't really conclude anything, does it? It's Kate, like I know someone who's not offended by you know a whole string of expletives, but it doesn't mean expletives are no longer offensive. Kate, it means Kate, some people aren't that bothered. Kate, you know? can you understand why Constantine would be offended by you immediately jumping to describing him as alt right with all the connotations attached to the alt right? But I've seen his act, and all of them apply to him. Wow. So me making fun about British people being bad at foreign languages, that's all right. That's no, interesting. I, uh, no, me I mean, making just, fun just, of just Russians just... and Novichok, that's all right. Me being talking about the fact that I'm Russian and my wife's Ukrainian and how that is difficult politically right now, that's all right, is it? No, no. I, what I, are you just, talking about? Just, just, just the, 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 I've just felt when I saw your You're set, just but... slandering me, Kate. All you're well, doing I here I mean, is it's... you're making up stuff in order to try and present me as someone who's all right. I'm someone who's this very is... much in the centre of politics. Here, here well, we that's, are. That's exactly yeah. what people you... on the alt-right well, always oh, say. Oh, yes, so, people okay, who say they're in the centre okay, of politics, okay, okay, they must okay, be all-right. I just find your material very sexist, Constantine, and I have done from day one. My material very sexist? I don't even talk about women at all. What are you talking about? OK, OK, OK. This is at the heart of this issue... Annabelle, I'll come back to you. Um, does that mean then that there should be a list of comedians who should be persona non grata at universities? I think Sh shouldn't. Well, aren't students, which is a place of 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 having your opinions and your ideas challenged in order to make you more evolved intellectually, should it not be the the one place? the one place where comedians who may challenge your orthodoxies be allowed to express themselves. That's actually expressing yourself and offending someone. It goes back to that. Why? Why? It, Why is it? Because you could be, you could find it offensive but just simply yeah. because you don't. Look, a Remainer uh, might find it uh, offensive uh, that someone has voted for Brexit. A Brexiteer might find it absolutely offensive that someone wishes to remain in the European Union. But we'd like to think that have a space where both of them could share those thoughts, not tell one side, you can't come here because I find your views offensive. I think the thing is, if, you, if I had, say, a rape joke between friends, I think it's offensive then. It wouldn't change the fact that it's offensive even when I heard it in a comedy club. It's the same thing. There are certain, yeah, there are certain lines yeah, which really are... Offensive. That kind of joke. Yeah. There are there are certain lines which are offensive, point blank, whether they're in a comedic um, element or whether they're in just a interpersonal thing. It's it's there are things that I think we should know that you shouldn't be joking about that are offensive to people that are triggering in ways. Okay, um, thank you, Annabelle Penhaligon, for joining us. I do understand you have to go. Uh, Kate and Constantine are going to stay with us. Uh, Annabelle is Birmingham deputy editor of the student paper, The Tab. Uh, so many. Uh, text, so many tweets coming in on this. Please share your thoughts with us. This is Five Live. So here we are. And do you know what? Yesterday I had a whole pretty much show, it seemed like, talking about the conservative leadership contest, which could have happened if that uh, vote of confidence in Theresa May had gone southwards for Theresa May. And that was a walk in the park compared to what we're talking about today. You know, having Amber Rudd on and all that lot. Fuck, jeez, do that all day long. This, on the other hand, about comedy and about what is acceptable and whether people are now sick of being told what they can and can't say. Therefore, this is the thin end of the wedge. A university saying to a comedian that he must sign or she must sign a behavioural contract. Now, banned topics in the behavioural contract. Racism, sexism, classism, ageism, ableism, homophobia, biphobia, transphobia, xenophobia, Islamophobia or anti-religion or anti-atheism and to be kind and respectful when delivering your comedy. That was on the contract. And one comedian who is a guest of ours today, Constantine Kissing, said, I'm not signing that. She's not doing that. Another comedian, Kate Smirthway, understands where they're coming from, although feels that perhaps in certain aspects they may have gone too far. What are your thoughts? The texts are flying in. Constantine is so right. What's wrong with these holier-than-thou people? Get a grip and get out into the world. Well, the fact is we have got out into the world and there's some pretty nasty people in it. And a lot of this is about saying to people who want to be nasty, it's not really that you have to be nasty anymore. Then this uh, text has said, no comedian should be dictated to as in content. Pretty ridiculous, really. As for a benchmark, if it would have offended Bernard Manning, then obviously it could be considered a little gross. Yeah, I don't think that's where you should set the threshold. 
to say, okay, some bloke who's really good and made lots of money of offending people. Yeah, let's see if he's offended. And if he's offended, woof, we definitely won't do it then. Really? It's like going to someone like Joseph Stalin and saying, well, we'll wait until he finds it violent and oppressive and then and then we you know, and then we'll we'll rail back. Oh, Joseph doesn't like it. Yeah, Captain Gulag. I mean, what kind of <laughs> ridiculousness is this from you? Anyway, then goes on to say, perhaps working class comedians could go to a university course on how to be correctly funny. If classes were held from 9 to 11, sure, it wouldn't interfere with student education, given the lazy so-and-sos are really up at that time. How patronising is that to the Mickey Flanagans and John Bishops and countless other comedians who come from certain backgrounds and who are incredibly funny and are nowhere near Bernard Manning? And his nastiness. Oh, for goodness sake, says this texter, shall every comedian now give out a script of their act to every member of the audience before the gig starts so nothing offends anyone? Some people need to get a grip. Now, I have to say, one of my favourite comedians is Paul Chowdhury. I don't know if you've ever seen Paul Chowdhury. This guy sets out to pretty much offend everyone. He calls every white bloke in the audience Dave. He calls every Asian a Bengali. He is Asian, Paul Chowdhury, by the way. This guy is, I've seen him, I've seen people get up and walk out. But they have made their decision to come and see him. You can easily see what he does, Paul Chowdhury does. It's all over YouTube. And they made a choice. They didn't like what he had to say because he was absolutely roasting a couple of people in the front row. They got up and left. But should he not be allowed to tell the jokes? that he wants to tell. But is it all right for a brown comedian to call white guys Dave? All right, Dave? All right, Dave? The Dave in question, who probably wasn't Dave, seemed to find it quite funny. It was a very mixed audience. And then he rips into an African fella, then he rips into an Asian fella. So is it kind of one rule for ethnic minority comedians to say certain things? Well, certainly not if you're Kevin Hart. And one rule for white comedians, they're told, no, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this. I mean, where are we at? Where are we at? Let's speak to Jeff in Surrey. Jeff, good afternoon. Yeah, hi there. Um, uh, it's great to speak to you because you, you really know what you're talking about. You've been booking comedy gigs for two decades, haven't you? And you've done, what, thousands of gigs yourself. I have indeed, yeah. Um, so tell me about this, this, this idea of, of a contract saying, look, don't be offensive. You know, don't yeah, offend. it's unusual that there is, is such a contract. It is very unusual. Uh, Do you think it's needed, though? Sign. That's very rare. I mean, I'm, I book a lot of shows. I've booked over 10,000 shows since I started. And I'd say a contract like that comes up about once a year or maybe once every two years. What, what do you do, though, if you book a comedian and they start to say, has it ever happened? I'm, I'm, maybe it has, maybe yeah. it hasn't. And they say something incredibly sexist or incredibly racist. What is your position then? It's, it's very, very rare because I, if you're a booker, you know your comics and you avoid booking people that you feel would offend anybody or likely to step over a mark. Ah. But if that occasionally happens, uh, I had an example once where I sent a comedian to a corporate event, company sort of corporate event, and they had a very multi-ethnic audience and they specifically told me to tell him and they told him himself before he wanted to tell him, don't talk about religion at all, just anything else but not religion. For some reason, he decided to do three minutes about the Pope, two minutes about Islam, whatever. And afterwards I said, what were you doing? And he said, in my head, something just happened and I decided, forget it, I'm going to do the religious stuff. And they didn't pay him and he said, fine, I accept not being paid. It's interesting, though, that you said, even when you're booking, Jeff, that yeah. you have your own. It may not be a contract like SOAS, but you have your own limits. And if you know a comedian is, is sexist or racist, then yeah. you, you wouldn't book them. I mean, to be fair, no, to be fair, there are very few, very, very few outwardly sexist, racist comics uh, on the circuit, the UK comedy circuit. There's might be 0.5% who are still trying to their trade somewhere it, it, to be fair 
99% of the comics that I work with and book, and even ones that I work with, I haven't booked myself, I just work with, are know the lines, know, know, they know the guidelines, they know the parameters, and, and then they keep within them, and they're generally good people. Um, they might want to make political points, but they're not trying to have a go at any particular section of, of, of society. But what does happen is occasionally a comic um, just has a, has a night when they've had a bad day, something's happened, and they suddenly... That, that they bring out a couple of things I've not heard before, or they'll say something directly to an audience member that's beyond what I thought acceptable. And in that case, then I would just stop looking at them. Mm. Um, Jeff, Jeff, thank you. Really interesting. Jeff in Surrey, thank you. Chris is in Leeds. Chris, good afternoon. afternoon. Um, what do you think? Do you believe that SOAS has a right to have a contract which states what the comedian should tell jokes about? Well, well I don't quite get. What's the the fear here? Is it people on on a night being offended, or the fear that this sort of comedy can uh, work its way back into the mainstream? What, what is it? Just literally trying not to offend people on a on a given night. Uh, well, you know, I can. I mean, I would say the answer to that is no. It's not about um, saying, "Oh, we don't want anyone." To, you know, bit, although that's definitely a part of it. You don't want people to come out expecting a fun night out and end up kind of sat there feeling awkward, looking round, wondering why people are laughing at this stuff that seems to be attacking them, sort of thing. But it's also about the attitudes that we put out into society. You know, we don't put shows on TV that that promote racist attitudes because we we don't want those attitudes promoted in society. If somebody wants to, you know, have their own radio show and they want to say things like that, they sure won't be doing it on the BBC because the BBC, quite rightly, don't don't want to broadcast those things. And I, f I feel like, you know, we're talking... We're actually almost having... The reason we're not finding a happy agreement here is kind of because we're talking about two different things. Like, on the one hand, what is OK to say... Um, you know, what, where are the limits of, like, free speech for comedians or anyone else? And secondly, you know, what is the right rule for SOAS to have put on their specific night or whatever? Now, I think the bottom line is that if you're curating an event, you can put down whatever rules you want. You can say, we're only going to have comedians who cover a certain topic. We want to raise this. And that's quite different from saying no comedian should ever talk no, about but Kate, this. No, but Kate, Constantine pointed this out very early on. The reason why this has gone viral is because people feel that what SOAS has done is indicative of a, a trend in society to tell people increasingly what they can and can't say. And that's why that there is no real confusion as to these two issues because they merge. Well, I feel like if there's a trend in society to tell people that they can't say or that they shouldn't say uh, racist, sexist, homophobic things, then I think Not a bad that's trend, that. Great. Yeah, yeah that's, that's trend, one of my favourite trends. And what yeah, I think that trend yeah. needs to do is go way, 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 yeah. way, 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 way further because I still don't go a day without hearing something pretty horrifically sexist being said comfortably within earshot of me and if you look at the comments section of any video I put up on the internet it won't take a great deal of comments before we're right through into a world of sexism and very often uh, other things homophobia racism etc etc um, so I, I don't think that you know it's gone too far I think if people feel that way maybe they want to just stop and think about what it would be like to be a member of one of those groups what it would be like to be somebody who lives their life hearing these things all the time and go you know what maybe I can change the way that I speak to people and the way that I address people. And if sometimes it feels like walking on eggshells, I think that's a very small price to pay for an inclusive society where there's a, a, a shot at genuine equality because we can't have a genuinely equal society when huge groups of people are experiencing discrimination and, you know, and those huge groups of people aren't, aren't the straight white guys who seem to be so upset about being told to think twice before they say something that might be really quite nasty if they actually give it their consideration. Uh, Chris, um, yeah. what do you think of what what Kate has just said? No, it's, it's really interesting. I think um, it, in regards to like on the on the night comedy, say you give a platform to people who have, let's say, really offensive comedy, not sort of middle of the road stuff. Um, they're going to sort of stink the place out generally. I think most people, even if people start walking out, it's not good for that comedian's career, is it? Surely. Um, so, and they're not yeah. going to be asked back, uh, and then that you know th so their views are just going to um, sort of disappear. Um, but then I think kind of cr creating all this publicity about somebody who's overly offensive, um, then it, it does go viral. It, it makes the media, and then it creates this sort of whole debate. And then 
And do you know what I mean? So it could be counterproductive in a way if you let sort of unacceptable comment not let let it. Do you, it's hard to explain. Do you know what I mean? No, I, mean, I, I totally know what you mean, yeah. Chris. It's that it's that thing of people deliberately overstepping the mark because they think, oh, maybe that'll get me on, uh, you know, a newspaper article or a. A TV show, or whatever, and it's exactly that thing that you know. If Constantine was happy and comfortable that his material is totally inclusive and is lovely and is suitable for the night that he's going to perform at, then all he has to do is sign the contract and say, "Great, I'll see you there." Except and, if I have um, principles, which I do, in which and, case I would and, and turn you, a contract like that down because I believe that this is not the way that comedy should be done. My set is perfectly compatible with their requirements, but I did it as a matter of principle. So you did it to stick up for people who do want to do no, racist I things. Did it, it doesn't make any sense. I did it to stick up for the comedian's freedom to play around. There was a story only three days ago, Kay, which I'm sure you followed in America with a comedian called Nimesh Patel, an ethnic minority comedian, I should point out. A very woke comedian. You'd like him. He went to a college campus. He did his comedy and halfway through he got pulled off for doing very woke jokes by, by a bunch of students who decided to find him offensive. I've gigged with you before. I've seen people find you offensive. Really? And no, when? And, and if people try to pull you off nonsense. stage, if people try to pull you off stage at that moment, I would defend you. But uh, let me just very quickly come back to your point about me being all right. I just got a, a bunch of messages from fellow comedians while we were on the break. Uh, one of them, a uh, well-known uh, neo-Nazi alt writer called John Cleese, you might have heard of him, uh, saying, I salute comedian Constantine Kissin for refusing to sign an agreement demanding PC behavior during his gig at a London University Society. So, I, I'm not so there we are. Sure why I'm we're in, doing we're... a radio show where the guests are now reading out their own text messages. Oh, I'm just, I'm just I mean, pointing sure. out to you, Kate, that like not everyone who disagrees with you is all right. Year, Do you want, I'm can you please sorry, stop talking over me, by so, the way? So I don't, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm not sure where. You want to get? I don't. We haven't got that much time for you to read yeah, out. Here's, uh, here's some good reviews uh, I had big, last big, year. Big Shall up, we get big, back to being, the subject? Being big, 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 big. You don't by John think it's Cleese. newsworthy that John Cleese, one of the founders of British comedy, he, he comedy wrote some very su- nice supports, things about me actually on one Supports occasion. what I've nice done. Man. You don't think that's newsworthy? You don't think that's relevant? Well, to this I, conversation? I don't know what I don't know what John Cleese's attitude towards. But, well, I get a sense by what you've just said about political correctness, but I, I, he's not my go-to default person when we're having these uh, kind of conversations. But you about don't think it's relevant to this conversation uh, about political correctness? But you don't think it's relevant to this conversation well, that this is what he's just said? Well. Okay, if it makes you feel good, fine. No, no, I'm saying it's relevant to the conversation because someone that okay. ordinary people would consider an authority on the subject has just uh, said that. Authority on 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 comedy or yes, on political on correctness comedy. at universities. On, on both. John oh, Cleese is an expert on political correctness at university. Interesting theory. Andrew Doyle is with us, who's the co-founder of Comedy Unleashed, which is described as a comedy night for free-thinking acts. Andrew, good afternoon to you. Hello, how are you doing? So, wow, this is much livelier than any Brexit conversation I've had over yeah, the last... Yeah, it would be, wouldn't it? T- it's uh, very contentious. It, it is indeed. So yeah. describe what your night's philosophy is then. Okay, so the, the the principle of the night is just that we we encourage comics to come along and to experiment and to not concern themselves with uh, offence and offending anybody because that can happen inadvertently anyway, and uh, to just encourage a kind of free speech ethos and to suggest that uh, we want a broad range of views. We just don't want to hear the same. Uh, the same political viewpoints uh, again and again and again, which is happening more and more. Uh, there's a real um, homogenous quality to a lot of comedy clubs in terms of that. So we're just trying to, to broaden that out a little bit and uh, and encourage people to say what they want. And it's definitely not a safe space. We don't believe that comedy should be uh, a safe space whatsoever. So that's the point. So um, the, so people are come, they can come on and tell those kind of 70s jokes about black people and Asians and that's... that's... Well, no, because it's not the 70s. That's not going to happen. I mean, what's very interesting about all this so is... So uh, those comedians talk... don't exist anymore, is that your no, point? No, I mean, I, well, I'm, I've been on the circuit a long time and I'm sorry, where are these racist comedians? Where are they? I don't see them. I mean, this is very interesting. Well, I mean, Const- for stars, imagination, that's Const- where Const- they all live. Constantine's video has gone viral, not because people are sick of being told they can't be racist. It's gone viral because people have been sick that have been told that they are racist when they're in fact just making a joke. And that's the distinction. And the idea that it's because someone jokes but about sorry, a topic, is the, So wait a minute, so wait a minute. The, the racist intent is not in the ear of the beholder, but in the comedian telling the joke. Therefore, I, someone someone who feels that it's racist does not have a right to express that opinion. They have a right to express whatever the opinion they want, but the right. the but, assumption. But that's not what, but you, yeah, no, but that's important. The assumption that you are making, the assumption that a comedian has racist intent, is a huge assumption to make, and also quite bizarre because well, well, no, uh, it's not. It's not. It it only is uh, an assumption made by someone who's listening to it and feels that the comedian has said something racist. 
clearly. What, but, but you're saying what, that no one like this exists. Well, I just don't know them. I mean, I've been on the circuit a long time and I couldn't name you a single racist comic. I mean, so, I, you know, they might... No, I'm not saying they might. So, so you're, I mean, you're some of those that, old that guys from the, from the 70s are still touring, you know, Roy Chubby Brown, Jethro, oh, yeah, these yeah, people, fine, they're fine, still fine. touring. So there is no doubt that there are people out there who but, are but doing familiar. really, you know, really... Like, like, way out there, um, sure, racist but, material. But and, and there's also a second level of that, that there are people out there doing material which they perhaps think is a little bit edgy, which they perhaps think is, oh, look at me, I'm, I'm defined. But, you know, I mean, I did a, a, a routine a couple of years ago in a show I was doing where I actually talked through a whole pile of really quite nasty sexist material that I'd heard in mainstream clubs. And I, I actually did a thing where I kind of switched it round and did it the other way as though it was a woman doing it about guys to kind of make the point about how, how, un, how unreasonable well, that sounded and how no one would put up with it. Um, there, there are definitely people out there doing stuff, but, you uh, yeah, know, I mean, not, I would not, absolutely defend well, yeah. Andrew's right to have that night, but that's the point. He's having his but night. Well, he's not, this is he's not a revolutionary set. night he's doing because he just pointed out there aren't any of those comedians exist. So, actually, it's false advertising to say, look, I'm this place where free-thinking acts come because he's just admitted no, no, those, no, no, those no, people no, don't a, exist. That's, that's a total misunderstanding oh, of what God I'm saying. Then. Uh, I'm actually I'm actually <laughs> suggesting that there is a culture in which audience members and people generally feel that if they are individually offended by something, that they will call for that thing to be stopped or they'll call for that person not to be booked, okay? And so what we're suggesting is that's not going to happen here. You can experiment and people aren't going to make this assumption that you're racist because that's the problem. People, if, they, if someone jokes about a topic, we're getting to this really literal-minded position where you start to think that they must be endorsing what they're saying. The idea that a joke is to be taken on face value is to completely misunderstand what comedy is. So, and I think we just need to re reevaluate what comedy actually means. And, and by the way, to suggest that John Cleese's opinion on comedy isn't relevant is hilarious. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't about, about it. It was the best joke it of this conversation so far, I have to say. Well done. Well done for that. Also, his, uh, his, uh, his, uh, it was more to do with his opinion on, uh, on, on universities' attitude towards political correctness. Well, so which, I think, which, I think which, which, I, I didn't on know he was an expert campuses. on that, Andrew. I didn't know he was an expert on that. Well, he certainly knows more about it than you, I would think. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know the measurements. So you have to about on the BBC on BBC News Night. So, so yes, yeah, right, and, and I've done plenty of it uh, uh, as well over ten years of being a, a, a broadcaster. Good for you, but what a ridiculous thing to say. Uh, anyway, okay. uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> Nihal totally didn't say that. Um, it, it's, it is really, really weird to come on a radio show and then rather than expressing your own opinion, say, I'm going to read out something that I think is, you know, that somebody said to me. I mean, if it's that great, send it over to Nihal and he can make an editorial decision about... It's fine, it's fine. He's allowed to, allowed to, to get John Cleese to big himself <laughs> up. That's absolutely fine. The, the, the I did not get well, him I, to I, big himself up. I'm being invited to read out my reviews. Can we please just stop? It's not a review. It's not a review. Kate Smirthwaite, Kate Smirthwaite early on tried to slander me by labeling me as alt-right and I gave an example you... it is slander and is I tried slandered? to give an I mean... example in fact I did give an example of someone who agrees with me there's nothing wrong with that it's not a review and it is absolutely relevant so let's please not I, I wasn't, pretend that... to be honest with you uh, Constant I wasn't really suggesting my name is Constantin by the way that's a microaggression I'm deeply offended I said Constantin you said Constant no I said Constantin okay this has now just descended this into what really seems stupid. like just a couple of children talking about nonsense um, well, I, I would actually, just, I would Michal, be just I... Interested, I'd be interested to just know, um, Kate, that someone like Paul Chowdhury, I mentioned before, and the mm -hmm. kind of comedy he does, which I find very, very funny, I have mm -hmm. to say, d would you class that as racist that he calls a white guy Dave? The only person to white people was Dave in the audience. No, I don't find it offensive, but if people don't, but people, if they go to Paul's show, they know what his show is going to be like. It's quite different to going to a show where they're expecting to see a mix of comedians. But also, it's very much about whether you're kicking up or kicking down, isn't it? It's a very simple policy. Are you attacking someone who is more or less privileged than okay. you? Are you, are you? Are you attacking across Con the privilege scale? Constantine, last, last word to you. Well, I think uh, Kay has just shown us what this is all about. This is about wokeness. This is about intersectionality. This is about labeling everybody according to their genitals, according to what they look like, according to their skin color, working out who's more oppressed than who, and then deciding who can make fun of whom. Uh, we have a word for judging people by their skin color. Uh, we have a word for judging people by their genitals. We have a word for judging people by their sexuality. And I think that's exactly what this is about. OK, and uh, don't judge anyone for any of those things. Uh, Constantine, Kate, Andrew, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. That was lively. That was lively than, as I said, anything that I have done on Brexit to this point. Yes! Hopefully you enjoyed the listen. Certainly my uh, Twitter timeline would suggest that you did. Right.